All right, what's going on guys? This is Michael from 3D Print Everything. Wanted to give an update video. It's been a while since I've uh, posted anything. I really wanted to do regular videos. I will eventually get to that point, but uh, I knew that it's just time to pick up the phone and record something to uh, update y'all. But this is the current setup. It's a little messy at the moment. I'm gonna show you what I got going over here. So, you know, generally I actually have this cleaned up, but We've got some customer parts here. We've got a printer I'm fixing there, another printer I'm fixing there. These two need to be assembled. This one I just took out of the box to assemble, which I'm gonna cover today. And uh, yeah, I'll just give a quick overview. Um, I don't even remember if on my last video I talked about these guys, but these King Runes, they're awesome. And they just came out with a new model. I know I didn't talk about this, but they just came out with a new uh, version of this printer called the KP5. They got a S, L, or S, M, and L for small, medium, and large. And it'll be a 180, a 250, and a 310. And those are literally going to be selling for, these guys are like 180 bucks. Um, I know the new ones will be probably less than that. I think they're in the 160 to 1 or to 200 range. The 250 to uh, bed size one is, it has an iframe and you don't have to see it. it they upgrade the extruder they make all this better the screen's nicer they they you know give it complete stiffeners uh with the with the iframe they make it real stiff and then um on the 300 it's like 250 or less like for less than 300 dollars you're gonna get a direct drive pancake motor uh clear bmg dual gear linear rails magnetic bed color touch screen and uh, dual Z, just everything you could want. It's gonna be awesome. And now, uh, what I've done with these guys and what I just upgraded is I'm, I've got cameras viewing all these and I got Octopi set up on them. So I ran out of zip ties, so I need to get a couple more zip ties to hang those up. But uh, yeah, these are now controlled through the computer and I actually have a live stream. So uh, <clears throat> either on this YouTube or I have a different email that I've uploaded a couple videos to um, as well. <laughs> I accidentally did too. So I'm gonna focus on just one YouTube, but I've been posting a couple live videos for a couple days of these guys running. So if you ever wanted to just check in, you can check out some of uh, what we're printing today off these little King Roots. And I'm gonna have a couple more printers on Octopi uh, lined up. As you can see, I got some customer parts here that uh, just came off the printers and need to be organized. Tool organizers little gaming computer that's a uh, game uh, we still got these guys um, not currently powered up but I'm about to get more printers powered up I'm about halfway through the workday today and I've got uh, about uh, I don't know 50 60 percent no more than that probably 70 percent of my printers running at the moment that's part of the reason why I'm gonna build this new one I want to get it running too uh, two old D2's Saint Smart Mingda got another reality over there this tin log is awesome if you haven't seen one of these it's a dual head independent head so this thing can do dual color or you can do two of the same print at the same time and it can either be the same print or mirrored image of itself but this thing has been awesome I've really enjoyed using it for production of printing multiple parts and uh, printing dual colors right now it's just doing a single color print it's actually a really accurate printer and you can see that surface it's kind of a clear but this produces a really nice surface and this is a uh, this is a melon scraper that a guy's ordered um, so if you see a melon scraper come out one day it might be off this printer here um, I've got a big ass beer mug I mean this thing's gonna be huge uh, yeah this will be cool um, can't wait to see it beer mug printing some rest of some water towers uh, this is a wood lathe thing but anyways, I've also got this Taz on consignment. If you're a fan of the Taz, um, this guy's for sale as of the time of this video. Um, it might be sold, it might not be. I think they won about $1,200 for it. They paid, I think, $1,900 or something. Um, but it's a nice, expensive printer. They've got some good uh, some good things about it. And if you if you really like the, the Taz and you wanna spend the money on it, it's a, it's a good printer. I've got it, uh, I just got it working. It prints pretty dang good, um, so not not too bad of a setup there. If you wanted to grab one of these, and then uh, yeah, so let's talk about 
the bulk of this video here. So these video will probably go on just a little bit, but um, actually I think I'll cut it there and then I'll just do a second video with uh, this. So this will make it a nice couple of videos. All right, guys. So here we are. This is, I just took everything out of the box and kind of unwrapped it. But this is the BQBX user manual. Uh, this is my first Kickstarter I've ever spent money on. I've now spent money on a second one. I bought the Creality belt printer as well. That has not arrived, but I'll do a nice video on this. But I was quite impressed by how I was taking this thing out of the box. And I knew I needed to do a YouTube video, so I figured, hey, why not? Uh, do one on this printer. So, first off, everything came excellently packed. This is honestly, out of the many, many different styles and brands of printers, this is probably the best packed one I've seen. I mean, look at this. They literally had this stuffed up in here, little slots for the wheels to keep this bed from moving. So you can guarantee that your UPS and FedEx can just toss these things all around, kick them, and uh, you're most likely going to get a really clean bed. Some, uh, a really clean uh, uh, printer. Uh, nice spring steel bed. This is kind of cool. I'm excited to print on that and see how it, see how it turns out versus a PEI sheet. I uh, mainly like printing on PEI. All the King Runes have a regular magnetic bed surface. I forget what that one's called, but uh, it seems to be the cheapest and easiest to scar. But, uh, yeah, so let's check this out. So it's not a very big bed. I think this is like a 220, 220 by 250. But what makes this one especially special is it's Octopi integrated. So what I just did up there and how I've got wires and everything going on there, I should, in theory, just be able to take an Octopi and plug it into this thing and have it set up. So that's the goal here. And we'll see how long it takes me to put it together in real time. So I'm not going to... Fast forward this, I don't have any fancy editing skills, but I wanted to show you this. Check this out, this is its screen. This screen is huge, really cool screen. I mean, can't wait to get this thing powered up. And there's the back of it, from my understanding. The Octopi gets plugged in somewhere back here. I think those are the mounts for it. And uh, yeah, so this looks like, this looks pretty cool. Um, I'm excited, I hope they make a bigger printer. And I'll say too, the user manual, really nice. Um, all color, touchscreen, fold out, individual steps, nice English. Um, so awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, I'm just gonna kind of follow each step here. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is try to pause the video here and then come back to each step and show you what it looks like. Um, maybe I'll do a couple steps and show you, but that way this video doesn't run too long. Okay, I want to note here a lot of other things. It's stuff like this. Remember, you tape down your wiring, you zip tie your your cables here, and everything. This is from the factory, so they had this thing assembled, took it apart, and then did all this to it. This is the attention to detail that I like to see. So I, I'm I'm fairly I feel fairly confident that this is going to be a really solid piece. And not to mention, look at this. You got a double double frame here, really nice matching sheet aluminum casing. You know, there's your supply, enough airflow room. You got a fan on the inside here. Not all printers I see come with fans on the inside here, so that's good. They know they need to cool that off. Hey, kitty kitty. Hey. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is, and, and let me say, this right here alone, before I put anything else on it, which they claim this extruder is the most lightweight in the world. Um, I don't know about that, but it's probably a lightweight extruder. It does look really good, and I'll talk about that here in a second. But this, this is heavy. It's got to weigh at least 10 or 15 pounds. Um, so it should be nice and sturdy. Okay, so let's take a look at the extruder before I put it all together. So I will say, it is pretty lightweight. I mean, it feels like, well, let's not <laughs> drop and break it. But that's cool. So it looks like all of our cable that's going to come in from one HDMI. That's neat. I haven't seen any other printer use an HDMI yet. Um, and they did listen, so when I first saw this printer, it had a different hot end. And they planned on having these delivered in uh, 
early December. They wanted to, it was like late November, early December, they were going to start delivering these printers. But a lot of the community said, hey, we can just see on your design that your the way you did your fan system, it's going to blow down into the part and interrupt things, especially if you're doing ABS or PETG. So they went with a, uh, what is this? I forget the type of design, but, but all these fins direct the air upwards. So you're not going to get any airflow from this fan going downward. All this is going to go upward and out away from your print if you don't want print cooling. So that's pretty neat. You got a nice one-way cooler. Ideally, I do like coolers that, that kind of cool from both sides because I, I have seen where a part cooling fan that only prints, that only cools from one direction can affect certain prints and it's kind of like certain shapes. So it's generally good for like 98% of prints but there's like two or three prints where I'm like, oh, I either need to change that or just that wall is going to look that way because of the direction of the airflow. Um, now, the rest of this looks pretty nice. They got it all in here. I can tell you right now, I don't look forward to this printer ever having a major malfunction and gunking all this up. You know, if you get plastic all up in this thing, you know, that looks like you're going to have to replace you know your whole board if you do that so this printer should be great as long as you stay on top of your uh, your maintenance with your nozzle um, now that shouldn't be too bad of a deal because if you're buying this printer hopefully you hook up octoprint and on octoprint there is the spaghetti uh, detective and what that does is it looks for stringy messes on your on your uh, print and it'll tell you if it, it'll literally stop the printer and alert you saying hey we've detected a bad print um, so that's pretty neat. It is uh, free for one printer, and then they got a paid service for multiple printers. But, uh, yeah, so I'm pretty excited. I, I use that on a couple of my printers right now. I haven't implemented it on all of them. But um, definitely I'll make sure it's used on this one because, you know, I don't want to pay 20 or 50 bucks, whatever this little board is, and then have to put all that back in there because that's, that's nice and tight. But I will say... That's pretty lightweight. That is a nice lightweight uh, hot end. So good job there, guys. Okay. Top goes together real easy. It's just two bolts right there. And uh, it bolts down. And then I just put four bolts, two right there for the hot end. And two on this side. And it, uh, it took me quite a while to get that first bolt in there because it's kind of tricky. And then when I went over to put this side in, I was like, oh, yeah, it's a lot easier to put this side in. Uh, so I should have made that one my first one, so don't make that mistake. Um, I will say a little bit of quality control on their uh, on their tools, though. This one came a little bent. You know, I could literally care less about one being bent, but uh, I will say that this one um, did give me a little bit of trouble when I was trying to uh, put it in there. It didn't quite fit just right, so it might have had a little bit of cheap tools, but hey, no big deal there. Alright, pro tip, when you're assembling this, take the tape off your wires before you put this together because it looks like I assembled this with the, uh, let's see here, see all the wires, the, the tape is under the motor now, and uh, I don't feel like I'm bolting it, so I'm just going to pull this tape out like that, but, uh, and that seemed to be fine, but yeah, take the tape off before you bolt it down. <laughs> okay, so here's what's left after the install. So that went together fairly quickly, definitely done in under 30 minutes for an experienced maker. Um, if it's your first printer, it might take an hour or more. But fairly simple, you just bolt that on, you bolt those two on, you plug everything in, and uh, you bolt the, together the extruder, you plug that in, you zip tie one cable here, and uh, you're good to go. Um, these cables will go to the Octopi setup, so this is where I'm at now. I've been through step 11, 9, 10. So uh, I'm here to prepare the Raspberry Pi. So it tells me to go to uh, the Big Tree Octopi. I'm probably going to load a custom setup for it. And then I get to mount the Octopi to the back of it. So uh, that'll be neat. Follow up with you here shortly. Okay, so we've got this thing completely hooked up. The Raspberry Pi is actually mounted to the back. There's a little bit more of a process on getting the Raspberry Pi hooked up than what I was hoping for, but um, from hooking up these other ones before, I was slightly familiar with it, 
Um, so it was kind of cool. Uh, so, so it wasn't too too difficult. Right now it's doing automatic bed leveling. Um, this one does come with a looks like an induction sensor, so it's it's reading the metal uh, bed there and giving it points. Um, so that's kind of nice. I personally haven't been a big fan of automatic bed leveling. Um, a lot of the printers that I've had that have had it, um, I just had so many issues with it. Um, I had issues getting it going. Now I know a lot of the issues I had up front were I just didn't know how to work it right. Um, but I did have a lot of the touch sensors break on me. And um, so I, I just haven't been too great. I have had a couple induction sensors that have worked good. Um, so we'll see how this one does. I'm expecting it to be pretty good. It looks like... A really nice, you know, concise, balanced, hot end. It mounted really nice. Um, you know, the only thing I'd possibly love to see would be a linear rail on the X and Y like we have on our King Runes. But, um, you know, should still be should still be pretty good. Um, so I'll kind of go through the, uh, the process here of what you're going to do. To get online so here's kind of what octopine looks like when you get there let me get back to the screen that talks about it so what you'll wind up doing is once you get to the point of having it all hooked up it'll tell you to go to this website and you'll go here and you'll be like okay i don't know what to do with this actually and what you need to do is actually just follow these instructions um so you have to download this this program here and then this is what will write the octopi to an sd card so you need to get an octopi is what you have to buy for uh hooking the octoprint uh up to this printer and then it'll either come with an sd card or you buy an sd card and then you have to go in and make this change if you want the wi-fi um, or this change and and this was kind of tricky at first but you have to flash so what you have to do is you have to flash your hard drive first you go you go to uh, octopi.com or, or whatever the website is and you'll download this file and then when you open this program you'll click on this go to downloads click on that file click your SD card flash it take your SD card out put your SD card back in then you can change this. So there's a couple steps that are kind of missing here, and this is why I wanted to show you. So I know this video might run a little long, but hopefully for people that are trying to, uh, you know, get this going, this might help out. So, so yeah, you'll take that SD card out, put it back in, then you'll be able to edit um, these files here. And you can, you can. Uh, this is for again your, your whatever, but you can copy. This is what I did. I just copied, and then went into the folder found the configure text and pasted it okay and then this is where there's a couple different things that you can do you can follow these instructions which is wanting you to run the pie in your computer or you can now hook up your pie to your computer and an ethernet cable um, so that's what I did because I'm actually gonna have these hooked up to an ethernet cable so you you log in to your pie and I'm not going to show, I, I don't have this to show, but when you first get it, what, what you're going to do is you're going to take the pie, plug it into the back of the screen per the instructions. So the instructions over here, and you'll see this if you're, you know, you'll, you'll have this obviously if you're working with this printer, but just to show the people that are interested, you'll plug in this little adapter and then it has to plug in to the board because there's actually that little adapter goes into the back of the screen and uh, you can do a Pi 4 or a Pi 3 so if you want the more powerful 4 you can spend a little more money and grab one of those and then you'll plug in your two cables and then the Pi is hooked up so then and, and what's really important here and I'm gonna they try to highlight it but I'm gonna highlight it a little further right here on step 5 this little cable, they paint one side of the cable. Well, that cable can go in there um, not only backwards, but you can also not pin it correctly. So the first time my screen didn't come on, and it was because I was one pin off on that little connector. So be careful when you're plugging in your screen, because um, it would suck if you know plugging it in the wrong way might might burn it up. I don't know, but 
Um, yeah, so once you get all that plugged in, you can then start your printer, and when you long press the knob, you can then go to Raspberry, and that'll take you to your Raspberry screen, which is this. So essentially, if, if you don't want to, you know, run your program, run your, uh, you know, connect with console and do all this SSH, you can skip all this and go right to this. Okay, so you'll, you'll open up, You'll log in to Pi, which your login is PI for, for your username, and then the password is Raspberry, all lowercase. You'll, you'll log in, and then you'll type in this right here, and you have to get it right. And uh, the first time I did it, it'll have you do your password again, and I did the password wrong, and it pre-installed, what was it, I don't know, something, but... It, but one change to this that I had to make was right here at the SVN export I had to add a dash dash force and, and my okay so my phone died right there where I left off I apologize for the terrible editing guys but uh, yeah let me see if I can pick up where I left off so if I remember right when I had to do this so I, I plugged the Pi into the printer um, got the printer fired up and running, got Pi running, went over to the Pi menu, got here. Um, you need to put this uh, in. So you just plug a keyboard into your Pi instead of having to go through this, uh, go through making, making an SSH. Um, you can skip all this, plug your Pi in, go right to right here, put this in and it should work. Now if this doesn't work, if, if plugging all this in doesn't work, what you do right here is you put a, a dash dash force F-O-R-S-F-F-O-R-C-E F -F -O -R -C -E, and make sure that you have a space in between the dash uh, well the export dash dash force space and uh, that will because um, I was getting an error saying that this install bin was already made and that it wouldn't write it unless it was forced. So, so we had to put that force command in there. Um, yeah, and then once you do that, it is it is complete. So, so you're pretty much done there. There is one other step that I either missed in the directions. Let me let me double check these directions because I don't remember seeing that. Okay, so what's interesting here is this is all it's telling me that I need to plug in as a power to the Pi right here and then it looks like communication right there and then the other one is like this piece right here that like actually presses into the board itself so there's three points of connection but that actually did not get it working for me so I had one other step that I had to do and I'll show you that right now so <clears throat> I, I was able to get to this screen, but I wasn't reading anything from the printer. Um, so I wasn't, I wasn't, all this was zero, and uh, I couldn't get it to control the printer. I also couldn't get Octonet to connect, uh, Octoprint to connect to the printer. So what I had to do was add one more cable here and plug it into the front of the printer here. So now I've got full control. I got my first test print off of it. So this is, this is the first test print. Let's see how easy... Oh, look at that. That's that's what you want to see. Very nice. Look at that. And I, I even smashed the bed a little bit. So that's that's the amount of damage it'll do if you if you run it into the bed. I've already cut through the the surface. So I, I need to adjust the I did an auto bed leveling, but I didn't adjust the distance of the nozzle. So that's what did that. So definitely uh, do your auto bed leveling, adjust your, your thing there, but this print looks pretty awesome and this filament is our first run of filament from our production line so <clears throat> a good friend of mine I told him about uh, you know the 3d printing and everything we became good friends and we talked about filament production he bought a filament line and uh, I am the first reseller of Texas made uh, 3d printer filament so the the company's name is dragon print filament you can buy it through me here at 3d print everything uh, we sell a full 1 kg of plastic, then the roll on top, so the whole thing weighs about 1.2, 1.3 uh, for $25 retail, or we can get it down to under $15 if you're buying in bulk. Um, but yeah, great, great filament. I've had a lot of good luck with it. There's another piece from it. I've got 
plenty of other pieces uh, that I've been using it for. So it's one of my new favorite filaments. But yeah, otherwise, I like the printer. And I, and I didn't notice, look at the size difference of this motor to this motor. So their drive motor is actually quite smaller. So that's pretty neat. I like the HDMI cable there. That's pretty cool. Everything about this printer is pretty awesome. I really like it. The only things I would love to see more is maybe some linear rails on the X and Y. Um, you know, on the Z2 would be great. But I love the screen. I mean, that screen, if I'm going to buy it, is 70 bucks or, or something like that. $70, $80 for a nice 7-inch screen. So for the Kickstarter, I'm quite happy. I, I, I will say I'm pleased with the purchase. I believe I paid $250 um, for this guy when it first came out, which was a really good deal. Paid 50 bucks for the for the uh, Raspberry, and uh, yeah, I've got now another Wi-Fi controlled printer. Now I will say though, these King Runes at 180 dollars plus you know 30 to 50 bucks in uh, <clears throat> in those Octopies is still a cheaper, and you, you know it's probably comparable, if not a better printer as far as some of the things it has. But um, this has its notable quality, so I'm really excited about it. I do like it. But uh, yeah, hopefully this video is not too long, guys. Just wanted to try and give you a little update. This guy's for sale. I don't know if I mentioned that. If anybody wants a Taz for $1,200, um, yeah, we've still got the rest of our fleet over here working away. Uh, I need to get a couple of these guys started. But thanks. Um, just as a quick side note, I don't recommend anyone buy a CR10 Max. I, I CR10 Max, CR10 Max. I had another one the other day that I had to repair. I, I'm stopping all repairs on CR10 Maxes. I don't like them. They're not very good printers. They constantly have problems, at least with the ones that I deal with. You know, and granted, I'm a business, so people only call me when stuff doesn't work right. But I can tell you, out of all the printers to repair, the CR10 Max is not a fun one. So I, I just would say avoid that. Get a big 10 log or something. Anyways, thanks guys, have a, a good day, and uh, we'll update you on some more stuff real soon.